welcome welcome this is pretty in black i am halo eating gray um i just wanted to talk about very interesting thing that seems to be happening a lot lately with the channels that i watch um my my youtubers my fave youtubers they are beefing <laughs> they are at each other's next or something i don't know um drama let's talk about youtube drama um in general i mean i think i get why people you know find it interesting and i think people lie and be like oh i'm not i'm not interested in drama no one wants drama in their life but you want to know all about other people's drama like stop playing so <laughs> um i think it is kind of interesting i mean the, the same way I think what it is is that you know you may you may be watching a video and you may hear someone say something and you kind of it makes you think of another youtuber and so you're just wondering if like oh i wonder if that's who they're talking about or i wonder if that was a shot at them and then you know maybe that youtuber hears it or uh, hears it or someone sends it to them or whatever that clip and then I think if they don't respond if they don't say anything I think life just goes on like normal but sometimes for whatever reason they're like oh no I need to address this and so now they're putting it out that they're offended by something that was said by someone else and now you want to know like is that that first youtuber are they going to apologize or are they just going to stand firm on the square you know like <laughs> are they just going to be like no, I said what I said. So you, you just never really know how it's going to go. But I mean, it does become interesting, I think. Um, and I feel like I'm so, I, I'm so weird about this because I honestly don't care if like they make up or not. <laughs> like I don't care if you make up or not. Like it is what it is. Like I didn't subscribe to your, tro to your channel for your drama though. So I hope that that doesn't continue to be your content. But aside from that, I mean, be friends with who you want. Be cool with who you want. Like you don't have to like a person even if they make similar videos to you sometimes your energy just doesn't vibe with another person's energy and it just is what it is and I definitely think that's true among some youtubers that have the same niche they have the same vernacular you know they use the same words in their in their videos they make similar content they cover similar topics I know we want them to get along in real life or or at least on YouTube but honestly if they keep button heads over like little things it, their energy probably doesn't match and they probably shouldn't try to make up they should probably just leave each other alone and don't even mention each other's name or anything about each other at any point like that's really what it is even if someone directly asks just stare blankly off into space just <laughs> because you know clearly you could say oh yeah i heard that person likes blue and then that person will then then that other youtuber will be like who are you to say what my favorite color is you don't know me like clearly your energies don't match so please just stop mentioning each other i know everybody wants it to be kumbaya and everybody unify um and i know that's important to us but sometimes you gotta you know you gotta respect those you wouldn't like everybody sometimes you know you don't need to, to look into it further you just go no this person has an energy that i don't vibe with so i'm gonna keep it moving but while YouTube drama is interesting and also kind of sad sometimes where you really want people that you're subscribed to um, to get along, there are a couple things about it from kind of a subscriber perspective that I want to talk about. So one thing is people who kind of try to shade people for being subscribed to two different YouTubers that don't ever seem to get along. Especially in in certain niches because they have this, they're talking about the same things. Like the moment I watch one person's video, it's like, oh, people who watch this video also enjoyed videos from this person. And so then I end up subscribed to these channels. They're covering literally the same, the same topic. It's like, oh, you're all talking about Tory Lanez. Oh, you're all talking about 50 Cent. Oh, you're all talking about, you know, 
really anything in regards to black people or entertainment or whatever the situation is. So why, why wouldn't I subscribe? And their ideologies, uh, for the most part, don't you know, conflict to me. So it's not like I feel like, oh, if I listen to this person, I have to wholeheartedly believe every single thing that they say and just completely follow their whole doctrine. And, and this person who agrees with most of this doctrine, but there's maybe a couple things that they don't agree with, well, there's a conflict, so I just can't follow them both. And I've literally seen comments of people saying, I don't understand how people can be subscribed to both. This person is this, that, and the third. They want to cape for their fave, and I get that. But I'm just like, <laughs> their ideologies don't conflict. <laughs> like, they literally are saying the same thing. I know one thing was like the thing with like, with 50 Cent, when 50 Cent did that interview with um, Lil Wayne, I felt like all the channels I watched literally had like basically the same take on it, which I didn't actually agree with <laughs> like any of them. I was just like, is it, what y'all say that they say anyway. He just confirmed what you've been saying in every single video you've ever done up until now. He confirmed it and, and somehow you want to say he's wrong and he's horrible and oh, what about his daughter? And and then what about Little Wayne's daughter anyways? But anyways, and then it's like, well, I don't even necessarily think that he's necessarily uh, wrong <laughs> like for saying such a thing. Like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, if that's how you feel. But you knew that was the situation. And if you don't know what that was about, basically 50 Cent said some said he basically said that the reason why these black men get money and go and date these non-black women is because number one they look like something you don't normally see in the hood it look they look like some exotic something that they don't see every day and number two because when they're with a black woman she's looking at him expecting him to provide expecting him to to bring them up bring them up out of their situation you know she's been in that struggle with him but when he goes into the these other women, these non-black women, they already have all those things. They got the money, they car, they don't need all that. So that responsibility isn't there. To me, I feel like 50 Cent watches your content and he agrees with you because he just said literally what you've been saying in like 25 different videos. But for some odd reason, him saying it made people upset and it's like, but isn't that what we've been saying? Isn't it, hasn't it been that they're trying to A, escape blackness and B, escape responsibility of manhood? Isn't that what he just sat there and said? Like, he agreed with you. I mean, you should have said, thank you. Thank you for validating everything that I've been saying. There you go. 50 Cent said it. I like to thank 50 Cent. <laughs> I like to thank him for saying it. I mean, like, you should have. But no, instead, everybody was, like, upset and was talking about how horrible he was. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. I don't mean like I, I it's hard for me to, to get emotionally invested in somebody <laughs> that I like you know what I'm saying? Like if I if it ain't somebody I'm really like super interested in anyway, it's like I don't know, I don't care what that person does. I don't care what most of these celebrities do. But um <laughs> really honestly, like yeah, so I think it was odd. I think that a lot of these channels, they all have the same take with uh, Kanye West, with the Kanye West situation. Another situation I didn't agree with. I'm not going to go into politics right now, but I didn't agree with what was said on any of the channels and they all had a similar take. Like it just was what it was. So, I mean, I noticed this a lot like they cover the same issues and they actually have a lot of the same takeaways i mean they may have things specific to their channel but it's literally like they're all talking about the same rainbow but one of them talk you know but one might be talking about the yellow one might be talking about the purple one might be talking about the green but it's all the same damn rainbow so <laughs> like it's not like they're it's not like they conflict to me I, I i just don't get it and i don't get why people can't watch a content creator and you know if you agree with a lot of what they say you know take away that and 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 learn and grow maybe maybe just learn some information from them even if you don't agree or maybe don't have a strong feeling about it i think you take away what's useful for you but leave the rest and don't look to i i think that people get on the internet looking to validate themselves in some kind of way and so if this youtuber doesn't agree with something that they think that they want to do like they'll be mad at that youtuber like how dare you not co-sign doing this thing and you know 
and um, you're just leaving me with no options. What can I do? You say that I shouldn't do anything. You're taking away my options. And it's like, you can really live your life however the hell you want it. You like you do realize that your favorite YouTuber doesn't have to agree with your lifestyle. Like, I, I mean, I, I watch YouTubers that, um, that are like, you know, politically, I don't agree with them. <laughs> Sometimes socially, I don't agree with them. But they might have various things that I agree with. So I watch them and I enjoy their content for what it's worth. Every now and you know, not even every now and again, sometimes in every single video, they talk about certain aspects that I don't particularly agree with their opinion on. And guess what? It doesn't change how I live my life, especially when it's based on my dating decisions. I wouldn't care if a YouTuber co-signed my dating decisions. I can't wrap my head around it. Like, why would you even care? It's like, when someone's in, then I'm not allowed. Then black women shouldn't do things. And I'm like, oh, she your mom? Like, I'm just so confused. Like, is that your mama? Like, <laughs> is she about to be at your house? Like, mm, mm, who you trying to date? Who that is? <laughs> like, I can't understand it for the life of me because I really just listen and be like, okay, that's how you feel. And then I go date whoever the hell I want to because last time I check, I'm an adult. <laughs> like, it's very weird to me. So, I mean, I think that there's a little weird thing from, like, subscribers, too, that they that they, I don't know, it's like they need the these YouTubers to validate some choice that they already want to make. Like, if you want to make that, like, go forth in the world and do it. No one's stopping you. It doesn't matter. And it doesn't even matter if people condemn you. Like, you, do you get that? Like, even if someone goes, mm, I think people who do that, you know, they are just, they are just bad for the world or something. I don't know. <laughs> Is it really like, can you not do it now? Or are you going to be like, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to be bad for the world. I mean, <laughs> so no, I won't do it. Like, I mean, I, I don't really, I don't really understand. But as a side note, that's, that's a, that's a conversation for another day or two day. I, I honestly don't know, but let's move on. So anyways, so I do think, um, it is weird to kind of, I, like I've even heard in videos where like maybe even the YouTuber themselves has mentioned something like, oh, well, y'all are just here for drama. Like you're subscribed to both of us. You just playing fifth. And it's like, y'all are in the same niche. So your viewers are gonna overlap. Like your subscribers are gonna overlap. You're talking about the sim similar issues. Like you're gonna overlap. So I don't see why you would act like it's a problem for, you know, for for a subscriber to to be subscribed to more than one channel, even when those channels are at odds. And just the the how how the ebb and flow of subscribers. I know with some channels it's like I subscribed to them in the past few months. So I have no idea what happened a year ago or seven years ago or when it when they first got on YouTube or something. Like I don't know. Like I don't know if you're friends with so and so or if you hate so and so. It's like you watch this one channel and so you get these other videos suggested to you from another channel and then you like them and then you're watching them and then one day the the, the most calmest, nicest, sweetest seeming person gets on there and says, I am so pissed off at so-and-so and their channel and their set. Let me tell you bitches. And you're just like, I didn't even know that it was that deep. And this the 18th time. And you like, okay, why? Well, I, I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> like, I had no idea you guys were at odds. I don't, I don't even see like you're not even conflicting in your materials. I don't even really understand the situation, but then maybe something that they've never even spoke on, like a topic that they never really delved into. It's like, oh, well now we're gonna talk about it. This is stupid. Like, it's like, well, okay, well, I didn't know you felt that way. Um, 
ma'am. <laughs> and so why would it not be subscribed to both of you? It's not like I was aware of that. And even if y'all had issues in the past, I, I, I wasn't subscribed to you then, so I wouldn't know. So I think it's very easy for <laughs> people to be just subscribed to two channels where the, the content creators end up at odds for whatever reason. And maybe they have a history um, of, of just really not getting along or conflicting in various, um, you know, situations or various topics or whatever. And that's why, but like you're coming in, you're new, you join Patreon, you, you become a member, you're whatever, and you like in these channels. And then all of a sudden they're arguing and now you feel kind of like the child caught in the middle. Side note, I struggle so much to get my eyebrow piercing in because I had it out for two weeks and my little eye is sore and I'm not crying my eyebrow sore but I'm not crying but it's making my eye water because there's pain there so um pretty in pain right now is where I'm at um anyway so I, I think that's an odd thing the next thing that I really want to talk about though that I really want to delve into from just kind of a, not just a subscriber perspective, but also a public relations suspect, uh, perspective, because that's what I have my degree in, okay? We, we all got our degrees. Mine is in public relations. So one thing that I've noticed too with some of my faves that are currently beefing is when they're taking shots at each other. Like I said, I think that for the most part, these people tend to agree in their view points on things like I mean their points are the same their terminology that they're using is all the same like they're really and, and I think in a sense they have similar goals um so you know they're maybe trying to do in the black woman empowerment or whatever they may be trying to go for I mean I think that's kind of like the overall goal goal and maybe unity and stuff like that so they're gonna why they might deal with specific aspects each individually um they're they're kind of all talking about the same thing and so they can't they're not really conflicting on content so they're not attacking each other based on like, oh, well, so-and-so literally said women should do this and I think women should do exactly the opposite. It's typically like, well, I mean, that makes sense too. Kind of like, like y'all don't really disagree with each other as much as y'all think. I don't know why, but you, you're not really disagreeing with each other. You're literally just saying the same thing they said in a different way and I don't know why it's I don't know why there's a conflict but typically these conflicts are because personal attacks and it's not about who has a right to respond or it, it you got a right to, to respond do whatever you want. I don't even like that I ain't even worried about like you somebody say something about you you feel some kind of way speak on it okay do you like a, okay cool my thing is this, from a PR perspective, from you're putting yourself out there, you have subscribers, you have people in your audience that you're talking to in a general makeup of that audience. I think you should consider the general makeup of the people who are subscribed to your channel before you shame someone for certain things. Um, I'm like really, really bothered by the like shaming someone for being a single mother. Like I, I've, I've seen that on a couple different channels recently where they're literally like one, one YouTuber literally was like, if I became a single mother, I would just leave YouTube. I, it, it, like why, why can't single mothers be <laughs> like, I'm very, I'm very confused. And they're shaming someone and they're shaming someone who has never said that there was anything wrong with being a single mother. Matter of fact, said absentee fathers are the problem, not the single mothers, because the single mothers are the ones that are actually raising the child. I don't know what I don't know what y'all want women to do when the men leave. Should we chuck the babies over over the cliff somewhere? Like, oh, fuck it, you ain't taking care of mine either. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is. Anybody can make a mistake or be drunk that day or have plans that fall through or be horny that day or whatever. That can happen to literally anyone. But now there's a child, and basically the woman is saying, okay, well, there's a child. I guess I'm raising a child and the man is saying fuck that fuck that kid like, 
let's shame the parent that's actually raising the child. That makes sense. And it's weird to me because in, especially in these black women empowerment channels, they, they will talk about, you know, how like women need to not beat themselves up about this. They need to, you know, get back on track. And yes, I mean, yeah, we talk about also not continuing to be a single mom, some of those channels. Um, We'll talk about that and, and talk about, you know, trying to avoid becoming a single mom. Though, um, some of these channels are sitting there, I'm like, it ain't as easy as you think it is. Like, you you can think all day long that, you know, you did everything right and everything like you were supposed to do. But for some odd reason, you know, you end up in a situation. I think that a lot of women don't wake up and go, you know what? I want to raise a kid by myself. And actually, the women who do typically aren't black. I mean, the ones that really do go like, you know what, I want to raise a kid regardless. They're not black women. But of course, no one dogs them for that. So black women may be, you know, they may choose wrong, make bad decisions, whatever. But the intent was not, oh, I want to raise this child by myself. It was, oh, I want to raise this child with this person. But this person is like, no, because apparently this person is a crappy person. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's not, I don't think that that's the, the intent going into the situation. So, I mean, you do everything you can to avoid it, but it could still happen to you. So I wouldn't really be dogging people out for it. And at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. I mean, like I said, we're not... We not going to chuck the children over the cliff because the, the guy decided he wasn't going to show up to pick up his child every weekend like he said he was. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is what it is. But I think it's weird to to shame a person for that. It is it is a it is a personal, sh uh, you know, shot at someone. And I know that they go, oh, well, this person attacked me personally, so I want to attack their personal life. But it's like... But in doing that, you do realize that you have an audience primarily of black women and it is super common for black women to be single mothers, which means there's probably a significant amount of people in your audience that are subscribed to your channel that support you that are single mothers and you're making it sound as if there's something wrong with them. Like being a single mother in general is just bad. The other thing I don't get is how do you not know a person's marital status but assume that they're a single mother? Like I like I just I think that's weird too because it's like so you're saying just because they had a baby and they're black or the person they had the baby with is black then they're a single mother. Like you don't even know their marital status. So that's a weird, like I feel weird about that too. I feel like you are making assumptions there, but it's really odd to me. I mean, in, in general, it's odd to me. So it single mothers, for instance, that's just an example. Also shading a person for their marital status. I really, really hate the shading for the marital status thing because you take away a woman's autonomy. And I think black women, we really, really get that taken away from us way too often. It's just, it's so annoying. It's like, I don't even know any black women my age who haven't had multiple serious proposals of marriage, right? Like, but we don't get to not want to be married, not want to be tied down, not feel like we found the right person yet. We don't get that. Like, you don't meet a man, he's a bachelor, he been a bachelor, why aren't you married? I just ain't found the right one yet. And that's fine. But let a woman be like, I ain't found the right one yet. It's like, mm-hmm, she can't keep a man. She can't even get a man. Mm-hmm, she trying to tell somebody what to do to get married. And she ain't even married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why she can't even get the ring. Why she talking about marriage don't matter. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we here like why are we here like why can't a woman decide that she doesn't want to get fucking married like I don't I don't really get that or maybe the, why can't she just decide that she hasn't found the right one yet and it's so weird to me too because all these people are single so it's not even like they're married so it's like for real like you shading someone for being single but you're not even married. So like, it doesn't make any sense. But anyways, even if you were married or not, marriage is not a fucking status symbol. Like, I, I just don't get that. Like, and I'm not saying 
don't get married. Marriage is fine. You want to get married? Get married. Like, there's nothing wrong with being married. Being married is awesome. Go ahead. Do you, boo. But if you don't want to be married, you should have that right too without someone constantly trying to throw it up in your face. And so when you think about the things that people attack black women for specifically, being single mothers, being single, like, then, you know, and you're doing black empowerment, black woman empowerment uh, content. But then the moment that you get mad at somebody, you shade them for either not being married or being a single mother. Like, I don't get that. Like, and I hope it's very clear that I'm not talking about any one person because I've literally heard it across the board from multiple people. So it's just kind of weird to me that that's where we go with things. Why do we then shade each other on, on the exact things that we're trying to help women grow from? The next thing that they shade women for is their hair. Do you care? Like, this is like the silliest thing to me because like, okay, look at my face right now. I got on makeup, okay? And in pretty much every video that you'll find on my channel, I have on makeup. In real life, I never wear makeup. None, not none, none. I don't even wear colored lip gloss. This is literally just for this video. It is, you know, late at night. I got work in the morning. As soon as I get done here, I'm gonna go wash my face off. When I get up in the morning, I ain't gonna put it back on either. So I only wear makeup for my videos, right? So like if you were to watch my videos and you said, Mm, you're always wearing makeup. You're always covering up your face. You must, you must hate your own natural beauty. You never show your face. Like you don't know what I do when I'm not in front of a camera. Like you have no idea like how I live my. So if a person is wearing a particular hairstyle or a particular clothing, I know a YouTube channel. Uh, this uh, it's language videos because that's what I watch mostly. But a dude wears like the same shirt in every video. It's like a running joke. People will even say, oh, you know, we need to get you a new shirt. And he says, what are you talking about? I wear a different shirt every video. Like, you know, it's a running joke. So, but he wears the same shirt every video. And he even does like man on the street type uh, interviews or whatever. And he will wear that same shirt in like all these different videos. Pretty much every video he wears that shirt. I in no way think that he always wears that shirt. So just because a person is wearing a certain hairstyle in their videos every single time, you have no idea how they live their natural, their normal everyday life. You have no idea what hairstyle they have on their head when they're not in front of a camera. So then when you shade them for their hair and say, oh, well, you must not like your natural hair. You're not embracing your natural beauty or whatever. And you're trying to shade them for it. It's like, once again, here we have this situation where you are attacking black women in the same way that you that that the men attack us that you sit there and talk to us about in your videos you talk about how these men attack us and then as soon as you get mad at a woman you attack her in that same way you you want to talk about her marital status you want to talk about whether or not she's a mother and married you want to talk about her hair you want to talk about makeup or you want to talk about her weight or something and it's like it's the same thing or, or whether or not she's insecure as a black woman and it's like well don't we know that a one of our problems is the insecurity that we might feel about our hair or our marital status or whether or not we're a single mother. Like, isn't that like a real thing? Like black women are always getting attacked specifically for their hair, whether or not they're a single mother, like their marital status and their body type. And as soon as you get mad at a woman, that's what you do. That's what you, you attack them in the same way. And I, I, I don't really get that from you know from a subscriber perspective it, it just seems really messed up and kind of sad and it's like from a PR perspective like it, it to me it, it hurts your brand because of what you're trying to sell it would be like 
if you were trying to teach people about weight loss and living healthy and you got pissed off at another person, the first thing you did was call them a fat ass slob. And it, it would be like, well, you do realize that the people that you are trying to market your videos to, there's probably a significant amount of them that are, are fat ass slobs that are trying to not be. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, well, you do realize given the content that you're making, you're shading someone in a way that like, honestly probably applies to a significant amount of your audience uh, or people who might happen upon your content. Um, unfortunately, like one of the things that with the hair thing, it really does annoy me. Um, and I have, I have went back and forth with comment sections before over this. Okay, I don't wear weave. Uh, I've not ever worn weave. I don't know what that's like. I have a different texture hair, so I get why I don't understand all of that with the hair stuff. When I was younger, I literally thought that when people said they were going to sew in, I, I, I thought they were literally sewing it into their head. <laughs> And I was scared. I, I don't do that. I've always had long hair, so I don't I don't you know wear weave at any time. Um, I have a looser texture, so I you know it just my mom didn't put weave in my hair, and and she didn't perm it, and she didn't dye it. She's very much against those things. So in my life, I've dyed my, I've bleached my hair actually. I tried to re relax her, but it didn't do anything. Like I like my mom put a relaxer in her hair, and her hair falls straight. I put a relaxer in mine, and it's still curly, and I have to flat iron it. But it made my hair feel weird, so I was just like never again. So I've literally been rocking my natural hair pretty much my whole life except for when it was bleached. So I have no dog in the weave wearing fight or the wig wearing fight or the perm wearing fight or whatever. But here's the thing. This idea that black women have to do a specific thing with their hair is a problem for me. I don't give a damn who's setting the standards. I don't want people, the, the, the dominant society, I don't want them telling women, black women, that we have to straighten our hair or dye our hair or cover our hair up. And I don't want black women or black people telling black women that they need to not straighten their hair, not dye their hair. I feel like it's your hair. It's like, we do not get autonomy over ourselves and it gets so annoying to me. It I don't care if you want to wear a wig. Wear a damn wig. I don't care if you want to wear weave. Wear a weave. I don't care if you want to wear your natural hair. It literally does not matter. Like, I don't care. I just, I hope that you are doing what you want to do. And I get that because of our history in this country and because um, of our image being demonized a lot more than it is, you know, upheld and uplifted. Yes, plenty of women, black women feel insecure about their hair. So they cover it. That like, why are we going to shame them if they do feel insecure? That would be more sad than let me make fun of you. Let me dog you out over it. You see what I'm saying? Like that doesn't make sense to me. And so my thing is, if you're going to make content about black women empowerment, then why would you then shade women for the same reasons that the society shades us for? Like, it, I, I can't get that. And then why would you sit there and dog a woman and tell her what she has to do with her hair? It's not your choice. You don't get to decide. No one has to show you their hair. No one has to wear it straight or natural or curly or blonde or natural color or whatever. Like, I, I get annoyed with that so much. And I've even watched videos where someone's literally said, well, black women, y'all gotta stop putting weave in your hair that looks like this, you know, that ain't typical black hair, da, da, da. And I'm sitting there watching the video and I said, weave that you showing look like my hair. <laughs> so I'm feeling some kind of way. No, I didn't take it as a personal attack and I get it, but like, I, I'm just bothered by this like idea that there's always this criteria, these hoops that we have to jump through. If you want to wear weave, wear weave. Like, what the hell? And a person ain't making videos saying wearing weave is bad, so them wearing weave is not some sort of hypocritical like issue. They're not being a hypocrite if they're not saying, don't wear weave, rock your natural hair. Like, they're not saying that. So if they're wearing weave, 
then oh well like it and then some people will say well these people are pro-black or whatever and it's like but it still doesn't matter i am pro-black people doing what the fuck they want with their hair that's what i am i'm i'm pro-black with you being able to do what the fuck you want with your hair regardless of your skin color and i, I know and i don't care when other people do whatever weird hairstyles they want to do or are they trying to mimic us or imitate us i don't i don't care if a white person wears dreads i care more so when a black person is is demonized and shamed and, to, and told they have to cut their dreads off that's the damn problem it's not about whether or not non-black people can put dreads in their hair it's about whether or not black people can it's about whether or not black people can do the things that are associated with us without those things being looked at as negative ghetto demonized I mean, it, it, it's crazy because I feel like this is something that happens. And I don't know why we feed into it. I don't, I don't get that. That's just like when someone that I will have a sit there and tell a, a black person, say, oh, there's these women naming their kids, all these ghetto names. I said, who determined they was ghetto? They just names. Well, they hard to pronounce. Have you seen the name uh, Siobhan? Spell S I O B A N. Tell me that's not hard to damn pronounce. Like, stop playing. Like, who decided they were ghetto? Who decided it was ghetto? Who decided it was wrong? Who decided it was hood? Who decided it was dusty? Like, who who decided that? Because the reality of it is, is that it seems things that are associated with black people end up being considered hood, ghetto, unprofessional, dusty. Like, you know, they demonize the things that we do. And okay, you can I don't give a damn if a if a non-black person wants to demonize what black people do. Okay, whatever, you know, however you feel. Hate me openly, hate, hate me secretly. Like, I don't really care. <laughs> like, in, in recent times, I'm so sick of people telling me that they're not racist. I, like, I'm not asking and I don't care if you are or not. So, like, be racist. Like, okay, do you. Like, I don't care. But <laughs> whatever they think, fine. But dear black people, why are we demonizing ourselves in that way? If, if men, if black men or any other man wants to demonize black women for being single mothers or wearing weave or being single or being overweight or whatever, okay, cool, let them do what they're doing. Why are we demonizing each other in that way? Why is that how we're attacking each other? And I mean, it's sad if you want to attack somebody for that anyways. It's a personal attack. And I'm not going to say that if somebody says something low blow about you, you don't have the right to respond with a low blow. Like, that's not the point. The point is just keep in mind that you got a whole bunch of people out here supporting you that might fall into those categories. And then you're upset and then your emotions and your feelings, you start to make it sound like those, like being those things are the worst things you could be and that's you're probably describing people in your audience like I mean that's the thing you're probably literally describing people who support you and subscribe to you and so I just think as a brand <laughs> which you are like you know what I'm saying if you're a YouTuber at the end of the day you're a brand I mean I trademark mine like it's a it's a brand okay so you know at the end of the day, keep in mind, like, you don't want to alienate your audience. You don't, you know, you want to make sure that you keep that part about it. And I know people love to say this is like a weird flex to me. Like, it's really like a weird flex to me when people go, YouTube doesn't pay my bills. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, okay, like, what, what? Okay, you do realize that the whole reason YouTube cannot pay your bills is maybe because you don't have any. For all I know, you live in a box. I don't know what you do. Like, stop playing. <laughs> like, what do you mean YouTube doesn't pay your bills? First off, 
it doesn't matter if you do pay the damn bills. <laughs> like I don't know. It's a weird flex. It's a weird flex to me. Like I don't I don't get it. So what you're incapable of lying because YouTube doesn't pay your bills? Like what does that mean? Stop acting like you can't be disingenuous because YouTube doesn't pay your bills. That's a weird <laughs> it's like a weird thing to say. Secondly, yes. Yes, to some extent, if you have a successful YouTube channel and you have a lot of subscribers, a lot of times when you have side projects, things that you do outside of YouTube, you talk about it on your channel and those people who support you on YouTube then go to those sites or whatever and they purchase those products or they, you know, invest in, in whatever the side business is that you're doing. So... Don't act like, number one, you're not making money off of ad revenue if you're actually, you know, got monetized videos and all of that. Number two, don't act like you mentioning your products isn't sending traffic to your, those sites for, for people to purchase your products, which I'm guessing that your business, your side business does at least pay for something in your life. And it doesn't literally have to pay all of your bills. I mean, I, I, I get that we all have day jobs and like that's fine, well and good. And typically for a lot of people, they will just say YouTube is a side hustle if they get their channel to, to that extent but um I, i'm it's a weird flex that i keep hearing from like really every youtuber like like all of them they all say that it, it's very odd <laughs> like it's just a very odd flex to me like to say like oh well you have to trust what i'm saying or you have to know that i'll say whatever i really truly mean and speak my mind freely simply because uh, YouTube doesn't pay my bills. <sighs> it's a weird flex, but yes, while YouTube may not actually pay your bills, you still do have supporters here. We love you. And, you know, just keep in mind who's out in your audience and keep in mind your overall message. Keep your head up, you know, and, and just think about like, if you really want to empower black women, if you really want to uplift us and, and whatever, and this can be applied to really whatever your niche might be, because literally since in the last couple months, even my people from my language videos been beefing, it's real odd, <laughs> but like you wouldn't want to, um, you know, like if you were doing language videos, you wouldn't want to shade another YouTuber for them only learning one other language when there's probably a significant amount of people listening to your content, supporting your content that, you know, are only learning one other language, you know, things like that. So just keep in mind who your audience is. And that's something that you would do from a PR perspective because you are a brand, um, whether you pay your bills with YouTube or not, you are. And so, you know, it's cool, but let's let's keep our head about it. And I feel like I wanted to talk about that because I feel like, you know, a lot of conversations have came from this, a lot of live streams have been had and, you know, going back and forth. And honestly, I I, I mean, you know, it's all, it's all fine really good. Sometimes it's good to hear from some of y'all, like barely be posting. You know who you are. You barely be posting. <laughs> so then, then you go live. It's like, hold up. She going live. I haven't heard from her in forever. So let me watch it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, so that that is what it is. Like, I mean, you know, so it, it's interesting. And it's nice to hear from everybody. And I, I think lives are extra special because we get to like, you feel like, for that moment in time, you and your favorite YouTuber are doing the same thing, sitting there listening to whatever this conversation is. So, um, you know, and so that makes you feel special or whatever, but sometimes it can be like, why are we attacking each other like this? And I think it's real easy to jump on the bandwagon and it's real easy to just fall into the same patterns that we've been doing forever that you know attacking each other in the same way that we've been doing forever um so whether you attack a woman or looks or anything you know whether you do that or not just keep in mind who's in your audience and you know and who's supporting you and you know 
Don't attack a woman in a way that, you know, it's going to apply to a lot of people in your audience. They're going to be like, well, hold up. I thought that you were trying to empower us, but now you are acting as if being this one thing is like literally the worst thing you can be. And I mean, and when I say that this is ongoing and it's multiple people, um, so it's not you know, directed towards any one YouTuber. So it's literally, you know, happening, you know, everywhere and, and over and over again. And um, yeah, whatever. But either way, like I said, I mean, it's not like I'm about to unsubscribe from these channels. I like these channels. I'll continue to watch them. Um, I'll, you know, I always try to, you know, just take what I need and just leave the rest. I don't agree with everything, but I definitely don't have to. And there's not a YouTuber on this platform or a person on this earth who I agree with wholeheartedly. So, I mean, you know, that's fine, but it's just a little different perspective from it a different thing than what some people are talking about right now um keep doing you though love you so hmm like share and subscribe yes like share and subscribe <laughs> i need to get back on my grind but like share and subscribe i'll be making content i'll be here all week people no just joking and hmm what's next